Hello students, in this session we shall be studying about epistasis. Epistasis is defined as a type of functional interaction between two different genes, wherein one gene or a pair of alleles at a particular locus inhibits or masks the expression of another gene or pair of alleles at a distinct locus. Here the word distinct is of uh, great importance. Now, in this type of interaction, that gene which masks the effect of the other gene is said to be epistatic, while that gene whose effect gets masked is said to be hypostatic. This is basically a type of interaction between two different genes occupying two different loci. Here, of course, the meaning of gene has to be properly understood. According to the Mendelian concept, it is a basic unit of heredity that controls the expression of a particular character in an organism, while the modern definition of gene, of course, refers to gene as a segment of DNA that codes for a functional biological product, which is usually a protein. Now, there are many different kinds of epistasis uh, in which the first type we shall be studying in this session that is called dominant epistasis. And this uh, type of epistasis is well exemplified by the inheritance of the character fruit color in cucurbita. Here, the F2 ratio gets modified to 12 is to 3 is to 1. Now, by modified, I am of course referring to the basic original Mendelian dihybrid ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1, which changes to 12 is to 3 is to 1. Now, to understand this type of epistasis, let us consider that the character of fruit color is controlled by not a single gene, but rather it is controlled by two different genes. For the sake of convenience, let us call them A and B. Now, this gene A, which occupies a distinct locus at a particular on a particular chromosome, exists in two allelic forms. The dominant allele is represented by capital A and the recessive allele is represented by small a. Similarly, the other gene that is B, also exists in two allelic forms, namely the dominant allele capital B and the recessive allele small b. Now, what do these alleles control? The dominant allele B controls the formation of yellow fruit and the recessive allele B controls the formation of green fruit. So, here yellow fruit and green fruit obviously refers to the color of the fruit. Now, the other gene that is present at a distinct locus, which we are referring to as A, is epistatic over both these alleles, capital B and small b. How so? What it means is that in the presence of the dominant allele A, the expression of both capital B and small b is inhibited or masked. And so, neither yellow nor green color can be produced and instead white colored fruits are obtained. However, at the same time, the recessive allele small a does not show any kind of epistasis, meaning the presence of small a in the genotype will not influence the expression of fruit color uh, that is controlled by the other gene B in any possible way. Now, to understand this epistasis even better, let us consider an example where a genetic cross has been carried out between a pure homozygous cucurbita plant with white fruits, which is homozygous at both loci with the dominant alleles and the other plant is a pure homozygous cucurbita plant with green colored fruits, which is again homozygous at both loci but with all recessive alleles. Now, this cross will yield a heterozygous plant with of course white fruits in the F1, first filial generation. Now, to obtain the F2 generation, we have to cross two plants of the F1 generation. And the F2 generation which is thus obtained, it can clearly be seen that there are three classes of progeny. Some plants will have white fruits, some will have yellow and others will have green. And the ratio in which these plants are produced is 12 is to 3 is to 1. Meaning, 12 plants would be with white fruits, three plants would be with yellow and one plant out of 16 would be with green fruits. The presence of the dominant allele A will always produce a phenotype of white fruits because regardless of which alleles are present at the other locus, the presence of capital A will inhibit or mask the expression and thus only white colored fruits will be produced. Similarly, the only genotype where uh, you could get green fruits is where all the alleles are recessive, meaning this particular combination of small a, small a, small b, small b. Yellow colored fruits obviously can only be produced if the genotype has not a single capital A and at least one capital B. And this is how we can understand what different kinds of gametes would be produced by a heterozygote. 
so we have heterozygosity at both the loci so capital a can combine with either capital b or small b similarly small a can combine with either capital b or small b and thus a heterozygous plant would produce four types of gametes now this can be clearly seen with the help of a cross and a punnett square so in this slide as you can see a cross is between a homozygous white fruit plant with a genotype of capital a capital a capital b capital b the other parent is small a small a small b small b with green fruits the gametes produced by the first parent since it is homozygous at both loci only one type of gametes are possible that is capital a capital b similarly for the other parent only one type of gamete is possible that is small a small b now when these two plants are crossed in the f1 generation the first filial generation then you would get capital a small a capital b small b so these individuals would of course have white fruits but they are heterozygous at both loci a cross between two f1 individuals would yield the f2 generation and which is clearly seen in this punnett square so you can see that in this table uh, that four types of gametes are seen and then as you can see here i have used different colors for the different boxes so as you can see the unique genotypes capital a capital a capital b capital b similarly small a small a small b small b you can see that they are present in only two boxes out of the 16 that are seen here and the most common genotype is the one which is heterozygous at both loci capital a small a capital b small b and these are four similarly these two boxes which are colored blue similarly these two boxes which are colored yellow these two boxes which are colored a light orange and these two boxes which are colored gray these two genotypes are present in two and the unique one along with the one in orange and the one in green is also the one which is shown in maroon and the one which is shown in light blue so if you can see from this table very clearly in all the boxes the letter w has been written in a bracket which indicates that it is a phenotype of white fruits so we can see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 that is the 12 white in this ratio similarly we have three yellow the three yellow are 1 2 and 3 and only one genotype this one small a small a small b small b will give you a phenotype of green fruits which is shown here as one so the modified f2 ratio is 12 is to 3 is to 1 So that's it about dominant epistasis thank you